who who was um, who's the most sweary guest we've had? Him. <laughs> Yeah, you. I thought yeah. Gavin Mitchell was quite sweary. Yeah, uh, Gavin Mitchell is yeah, he quite was. sweary. Yeah. Weirdly, Amy. Weir- Amy's Amy. Quite sweary. Amy yeah. McDonald's quite sweary. Amy McDonald. Oh, and Greg Kim- Kim- Kemple's wife, Julie. Miss Hooley from Balamori. Miss <laughs> Miss Miss Hooley from Balamori was quite scared. Was oh, really? quite sweary. Aye. <laughs> I think you enjoyed that though. I did enjoy that. You're yeah. like, ooh, ooh, Miss Hooley from the kids' TV and, shows. Yeah, that's so a dirty, dirty thought. <laughs> It's a total dirty thought. Can Thinking we about everybody you want to bang from your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Always weird. <laughs> God damn, why am I thinking about Miss Davies right now? <laughs> Who's Miss Davies? So She's my drama we teacher, man. <laughs> Great night. <nine>. Johnny. <laughs> 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 right, okay. Right, sh- should we start officially? Yep. Yeah, sure. Okay. Man. Um, are you ready, Kat? Yes. Uh, Tom, you ready? Um, yep. I'm, yeah, I'm bored. Okay. I'm bored. Uh, Mark, you ready? Okay. Um, are, we, are we ready, Jamie? Good to go. Oh, good. You're, you're, you're um, listening to everything. Love this. Levels are great and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. Uh, roll the titles. Roll the titles. No, you don't need to say it. I fucking say <laughs> it. Right, so no, don't interrupt me. I'll start again. Uh, you all right, Kat? I'm good, thank Roll you. Roll titles as well. It's not a podcast. <laughs> We've got titles and graphics. I realise we were doing fucking Minder. <laughs> <laughs> Right, this is our show. Right, we do it our way. All right. We've so, even got a branded mug. Aye, aye. Ooh, I think you're the only one. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Calm down on the mugs. This everybody. is going to stay in as well. So let's just do it properly now. Okay. Cat, are you ready? Right. <laughs> Tom, are you ready? I'm always ready. Okay. Mark, are you ready? ready with the the titles. Titles. <laughs> about the no, that's my job. Now, you can't say roll titles. That's my job. Right. <laughs> The more you keep interrupting me and the more you get it wrong, the longer it's going to be before we start. Okay. So let's start again. Kat, are you ready? I'm still ready. Tom, are you ready? I'm born <laughs> ready. Mark, are you yes, ready? I am. Okay. Okay. Uh, roll the titles. <laughs> okay. Is there any structure to this show? A 9 to a. Woman. Blind woman. Wo- blind <laughs> woman. Damn, that was a good... If I ever fucking see you again, you better start walking the other way. What is that, Mark? What is that, Mark? Anal. <laughs> I would totally do that. <laughs> and in Wishaw, I am fucking loaded. <laughs> Thank God we get them in. <laughs> <laughs> the highlight of the show. That was, okay, that here was we pretty go. Difficult. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. Roll the test. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. This is uncut, right? Totally uncut. Yeah. Ma'am, you're looking at what uncut looks like. <laughs> we can't even get the title to it. <laughs> is there any structure to this show? None no, of no. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the podcast. This is the twelfth episode of twelve in the series of you and Cat Uncut. Why is that funny, Mark? I, don't, I thought that, I thought that was going to be this was a that was you announcing this was the last ever episode because we've asked about so much already. You gone? I can't do this anymore. Yeah, I've is. not even introduced you yet. Nobody knows who you are. So do I shut your face? <laughs> right? You're talking away, and people listening or even watching might not know who you are. Okay, I know you're quite popular and you're quite famous, but still, we need to introduce you. You. Who are our guests? Today? Our guests today are two very funny comedians mm-hmm. uh, from different parts of the world, even though they both live in Scotland. Okay. Uh, we have a comedian who was born and bred in Scotland. We've got a comedian who's born and bred in Canada, but lives in Scotland. Uh, please welcome to episode 12 of You and Cat Uncut. It's Mark Nelson and Tom Stay. Hey. Hello, Mark. Hey, hello. Hello. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I just said hello to Mark. Oh, sorry. Is your name Mark? No. No. <laughs> Uh, hello, Mark. <laughs> hello, you. How are you? I'm very good, mate. How are you? I'm very well. Thank it's you. nice to have you here, my friend. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, you're you're welcome. Class. Yes, you're looking a wee bit like the boy from Scooby Doo, but it's lovely to have you here. What what boy from Scooby Doo? The, the the blondie one, Fred. 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 You're looking a wee bit like Fred from Scooby Doo. He's a man, mm. yeah, and you're not. We just no, call but you call him a boy. <laughs> oh yeah. In fact, the last time, what, you're obsessed with his looks because the last time we met, he called you Ken from. 
Yeah, that I would accept. Barbie. Ah, but Fred. Fred from Fred Scooby from Doo. Scooby -Doo. Do you want to see Fred from Scooby Doo, Tom? Oh, am I been introduced yet? <laughs> Hi, Tom. I guess I'm the Canadian born and bred. <laughs> Looking at Fred. At a fat Fred. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. It's bigger. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Would have got away for it if it wasn't for you, fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Remove that mask. <laughs> yes, yeah, anyway. if he let himself go. <laughs> so it's, it's nice. Barbie's coming up to March, going, dang hey, man, we got to talk. You're pretty violent last night. <laughs> so it's, um, it's it's good to have you here, right? And I, and when when we dreamed up this this duo to bring in for the twelfth episode, I wasn't quite sure how this was going to work or what the structure would be or what the point of it was, right? So I'm not quite sure what's going to be happening over the course of the next hour or so, but I was in the shower last night and I was um, thinking about you two boys, right? And what we might do today. And I was... You know, I'm just going to go right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but you do... But you and finish your story. He's in the shower. He's thinking about boys. Yeah. No, no, no I was just thinking about you two, right? And what I'd, were you thinking about? I was, I was thinking, what do we do today, right? What's the hmm. podcast about? What's the point of this conversation? And I actually came out of the shower thinking do you know what i'm just going to let it ride i've done no research on you i don't know what you're you, doing you never do research on anybody well, because it's just a conversation so i don't know what you've been doing i don't know what you're going to be doing i don't know where you've come from why don't we start maybe people just want funny mm. does anybody think of that anymore yes, as a that's goal? my point right, right, james like yeah, yeah man i would like that's funny. jamie by the way it's Jam not james <laughs> whatever i'm not trying to fuck them now am i <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, you got my name wrong. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Hello you what's your name? <laughs> Do you two know each other though? Are you like yeah, friends yeah, from. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So, what's your kind of history? Oh, you want my, mine and Mark's yeah, history? Like, yeah, like, have you gigged together for years get, or what? Oh God, yeah. Okay, I don't know. Yeah. How would I describe our history? Yeah, we've been. Uh, mostly sexual. Yeah, that's all right. Totally, I, mostly. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> I didn't even know really Tom was weird. a comedian until you introduced him as well. <laughs> it's weird how we kept our married life. <laughs> Like the first time I saw him do five minutes, I knew that's a dick I wanted to suck. Like, maybe get a little bit of funny yeah. out of that. Fucking, you know. And listen, when you're new, you'll take Edison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I, maybe this is I, just how it happens. I abused my power. <laughs> and it turned into love. Happy it was, ending, yeah. quite literally. Yeah. Was, <laughs> let's just say every time we're finished, we call it the closer. <laughs> <laughs> the big finish. Yeah, the big finish. We like to, when we're together, the big we like to, you know, get each other, get each other laughing within the first minute. Sounds and then beautiful. Fucking bang it with a big closure. <laughs> <laughs> then head back to the wife and kids. <laughs> And live the lie we always knew we wanted to live. <laughs> I have my cake and eat it too. <laughs> um, um, yeah. How was your night, honey? Quiet. <laughs> hey, is, is there any milk and honey? <laughs> Jump in the shower no. here. <laughs> milk and honey. Wash off this illicit gay affair. <laughs> So, anyway, man, I know there's going to be haters out there that hear that story. But yeah, you know, love is love. Mm -hmm. hey, you, you, you can't deny your love for each other, and that's that's a beautiful thing. That's it's a beautiful a, thing. That's how it works. You know? Here's here's what I believe when it comes to stand up comedy, right? And comedians, I listen to a lot of podcasts in the United States, like Bobby Lee, Bill Burr, those sorts of guys, and they're very open. And I get the feeling listening to them, although in some respects comedians are quite supportive, they're also quite bitchy and they're quite cliquey as well. 
Is that true of comedians? That's stereotypical. That sounds no, like no, a no, big I, stereotype. No, it's not. Like it's not. It's not. Hold on. No, I, I'm, all I'm, Mexicans I'm, are no, fill in no. the blank here, everybody. No, 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 no. I'm, no, I'm basing it off listening to other podcasts of comedians <laughs> who is 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 the comedy world that you live in. Is it bitchy? Is it cliquey? Um. <sighs> Or would you say, like, when here's what I want to define bitchy as the person, or do we bitch about the situation that's going on in the world? Like, about as each person, other, bitchy about each other, about each other, yeah. I wouldn't use the word bitchy. I would say competitive. Yeah. Yeah. I would totally say competitive, but in the in the best possible way. Jealousy, Mark? No, nah, I don't think even think it's jealousy. I think it's just bitchies. I mean, there are some people that will be bitchy, but then it's like any work. There'll be some people that will bitchy at any. You're not going to like any everybody. Kind of, That's no, of course not. Human nature, isn't it? Uh, no, but because I think of the industry that you work in is so competitive. Well, yeah. Uh, I think, and I also think is it's probably one of the toughest forms of entertainment on the planet the toughest the to- do you think it's the toughest yeah yeah is it stand-up yeah. comedy is the toughest part of the I entertainment well, you've, industry you've only got yourself haven't you you'd either yeah. making it work or you're not yeah i yeah. dare anybody to give it a shot man i mean you know at least with what's well, even t- know, is here, it, here come, yeah huh is it tougher than being an acrobat <laughs> or walking a tightrope yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it is. Or when you're the wall of actually, death on a is. motorbike. Yeah. yeah. Well, because they never do anything new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't. <laughs> like, and, and there's only one learning. way you can swing. Yeah. So it's, it's you want to walk a slack rope? <laughs> well, I mean, it would introduce a bit of jeopardy. <laughs> like, how what many tight yeah. ropes are you going to walk, man? You know, how many how many trapeze are you going to, you know, like, I mean, there, I guess there's the Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. But, but I mean, that it's all variations. So in the, the world of thing. entertainment that we all love and adore, stand-up comedy, even though you're part of it, you would say is the toughest form of entertainment. I wouldn't even just say entertainment. I'd say the whole jobs market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it, Mark. You fucking nailed it. You fucking I cannot think of a tougher job than this. And so, I'm voting for Mark Nelson as union boss. So why in that case, Mark? Why did you choose it? Uh, or it chose it, me. It yeah. Choose it? Yeah. 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 Like there's only there's certain people that can only. This is pretty much the only thing you can do, and I think. Yeah. We are both that kind of person. <laughs> I'm like pretty useless. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you realise you've tried other things and you go, nah, this is the only thing in life I'm good at, so yeah. I might as well get paid for it. So you must kind of hate yourself a little bit as well oh, every day, to God, put yourself yeah. through that. Um, no, this is sounding, yeah, no, man, it's too fun, man. The, the, the idea yeah. of making somebody else laugh is, is, is the most joyous feeling in the world. Like when you come off of a gig, you know, yeah. when you... You know you've rocked that gig. There is no better high in the world, and and that's what I think everyone chases. Mm. Would you say? You know, it's like and, a drug, it, huh? Is it like a drug? It totally is a drug, man. And because the day the the the, the come down when you get it wrong on stage, that's also it's like gambling, man. Whether you yeah. win or you lose, the dopamines are flowing, man. Like when you come off after a shitty gig, you're like, you never blame yourself, of course. Because <laughs> I'm fucking awesome. You heard me, audience. This is you, know what, you know what you fucking did to me last Thursday. <laughs> I'll never forgive you bitches for it. If I ever fucking see you again you better start walking the other way (laughs) so i'll be doing more cunt jumps (laughs) yeah yeah but it's it's like and and it's uh, we were talking about uh how 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 like with the the process of why it's the high and lows and all that sort of stuff is is i was sitting there thinking about it is is when you're low when you when you do a, a shitty show Right, mm. you feel like you're on autopilot. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's that. I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm switching the direction of this whole conversation. No, go on. But uh, if we're talking about the highs, when we're when we're there, the autopilot to me is the worst comedian. This. But you can even you can even be doing well. Yeah, and go on complete autopilot. You get a, a few times on stage where you're just. I mean, you're literally saying the words, and in your own brain, you're going, "I have no idea." 
how this is actually happening That's because quite yeah, I'm completely though. thinking about something totally, totally different. So, so, so you're not even there in the room. You're not like, there in the nah. room. So we did have some technical issues there with your cameras. You were so good looking, Mark and Tom, that the camera <laughs> well, actually on, broke. Hold on, hold on. So I'm can, carrying can, this good looking. Yeah, can, <laughs> can and I were in vision. Yeah, uh, sorry but, about that, guys. But but now you in are fact, in Ken here. <laughs> but now Let's you just say I want to introduce you to my wingman. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello, there's your camera, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Work it, bitches. Do you know, do you know what I realised yesterday? The, the podcast I do with Ryan Cullen, right? It's a good podcast. Oh, dropping a podcast. Uh, yeah. We, um, last week, uh, when we took the, the memory card out of the camera, the file had been corrupted and we tried everything to get it back. So the YouTube one, we just saw, stuck up with like the logo and no pictures. And more people have watched that one than any <laughs> other episode. <laughs> like, vision. Our, our faces are actively turning people off here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, see, no, well, you're not the best looking dude. Yeah. There. That's, no, cancer boy and fat can. Like, right? Right now, which look was at the, him going. That yeah. was the working title. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about looks, we need, Ryan, to, we need to just get to make you. it clear. I love Ryan, but every time I look at him, I'm going, ah, he's only got four uh, weeks yeah. left. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I'm going to bring Do this you? in because you're talking about looks and stuff like that. Mm. Now, I've worked with Ewan for many years yeah. and he has described himself to me, I'm going to drop you in it, yeah. as a strong nine. I am a, a strong, strong nine. A nine. strong Do nine. You, let me hear your case for you being a strong nine. You're, look, you're looking at the case. So a strong a nine, nine means you're on the cusp of 10. Yeah. No, I don't think you've not just sneaked into nine. No, 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 no. Really? Where's Brad? Uh, no, Is okay. Brad Pitt 50? <laughs> you've, asked, you've asked me to explain. Okay. Right, go. Right. I'm, I'm actually right. intrigued. So I could sh look, show you pictures of when I first got married and I am a four. I don't know what my wife was seeing in me. I look fucking terrible, right? But as I've got older, I've go grown into being a strong nine. I don't believe anyone can ever be a 10. I don't think 10 is, is possible. Do you Nobody. not mean then that you're a strong nine in comparison to really yeah, ugly Yeah, yeah, who are you? Yeah. No, no, nine, we've got to no, 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 I'm a strong I'm nine. A nine. No, I'm a strong nine. Not just, I'm not just talking about looks, I'm talking about the package, <laughs> right? I'm talking about... <laughs> Yeah, the, the entire package. Every time I hear the word package, you know what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, That's you know, not a nine. No, no. Right? But I'm talking about four, personality. Five. I'm talking about the chat, oh. who I am, and how I look. So it's mm. everything, not just looks, because I know I'm not a nine just in looks. Right. But when you put everything together, I'm a nine. So, okay. So well, you're saying so you, so you don't believe there's any tens? I don't think there's a ten. I don't think ten exists. Right. So if you took if you took just Scottish celebrities, right? Mm. Connery. Never a ten. No, but you're putting yourself you're matching yourself yeah. with the same you, score. You talk about looks on person. I, I don't think that's no, the full package. Well, Sean, well, see, Sean, Sean Connery, though, I don't think you're the personality. Why would you, Kate? You're the woman. Yeah. By the way, you're the woman. The woman. The woman. Well, are we having two uh, separate yeah. conversations here? <laughs> yeah, but hold on. You're like this is a nine. Okay, let's just say that. A nine to who? A nine to a woman. Blind woman. Well, blind <laughs> woman. <laughs> Oh, that was a good one. Why didn't I see that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Again, Tom, you're not listening. I am listening. Right? No, you've got your comedy head on. And you're looking for angles to rip the piss and 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 think of a joke to have a pop at me. I'm not well, talking that's about that's happening I'm, too. Right? Yes. right okay. I'm not. I'm not talking about what you can physically see. I am saying. Right. So I'm, not physical, the whole I'm not talking. Package, I'm not talking the about the package. face. I'm not talking about the arm. I'm talking about everything from personality, yeah. from chat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the woman's oh. laughing. Right? I love it. Right. Oh, I yeah. hear you what right. you're saying. Right. So see you. Right, right. Okay, see you, for yeah. example, right? Well, so what, what is Tom then? Yeah, I, what I, am I? I, I think Tom's a good eight. Oh, right? good eight. I think Tom's a good eight. Hold on. Wait a second. Wait a second. Not strong eight. Nine just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, the thing is, you, you clearly shave your chest. I do not. Yes, no, you do. No, I don't. You do. You shave no, your chest. I don't. You must shave. You, you're, or you're doing something to your chest because that just doesn't look I'm right. A sexy bald guy <laughs> all the way down there. <laughs> so you're a good eight because you're a funny good eight. A good eight. Yeah. Okay, Kate, who would you rather fuck? I'm still cat. <laughs> I'm not going to fuck anyone that doesn't know my name. Yeah. <laughs> See that, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> you never remember her. 
first name. So I get it. Um, yeah, you yeah. get it first. Yeah, yeah there you go. Why the three Two. of us? Well, I, 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 don't I fucking mean, bring me into yeah. this. Um, this is, what are you? You're part of the conversation. I'm quite happy hiding in the mystery machine, eating this. So, yeah. um, <laughs> very much. <laughs> I'm not getting into this fucking context. <laughs> okay, right, okay. So, when you look in the mirror, yeah. do you like what's reflecting back at you? Um, I've never really thought about it. No, yeah, but you obviously know what you look at. Yeah, but... Um, I don't know. Not particularly. Would you rate yourself out of ten? No. Aye. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I feel like we're picking at a scab here. Yeah. <laughs> These people are quite sensitive. I'm okay with it. You're right. Oh yeah, I'll roll <laughs> with anything. <laughs> yeah. You have already clocked me. <laughs> I'm always looking them? for an angle. <laughs> so I so, still want to hear what what is, what what, is, what does Mark look at when he looks? <laughs> I should dye my hair today. <laughs> Yeah. Still alive. <laughs> yeah, I love the hair dye. By the way, I think, I think it's killer. See, I think it's see, killer. See, I think it's a see, bold. By move the way, too. every time you <laughs> offer a compliment, it doesn't sound genuine. That really didn't sound genuine. Oh, see the hair dye. I really like that. I, I do like, like it. Though. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Is that I'm, not I'm, part of being a comedian though? Is self deprecation? There's an awful lot of that. Is there not? Yeah, yeah but that's so. that's that's to themselves. But he's ripping the piss without ripping the piss. No, but ripping the piss is part part of it as well. Yeah, but I'm not ripping the piss. I think it actually, you genuinely like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> you know, you're, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're t- <laughs> you genuinely. <laughs> so if I walked back in high school. <laughs> There's more to life than looks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Cat. Yeah, but Cat. yeah, I would, I would get the hair from Mark Nelson. I would get that hairstyle if and that color. If you had color. any, <laughs> oh. if, if if I was in the late 1980s, if I was trying to be bros, right? I get that. I totally get that. But here we are in 2023, and he's the only person I know that's sporting that hair color. Yes, and you're the only yeah, person but- I know that's like a fake. Jurgen Klopp yeah. tribute act. Yeah. You, wow. You, you know I'm a like, nice one, cat. Thank you. You're a middle-aged man wearing a cap and you're not in a new metal band. <laughs> 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 yes. We all have our crosses to yeah. bear. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. I think wow. what we see in the mirror ain't what other people see. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I woke up today feeling pretty good about myself. And then you came and you met us. Yeah. <laughs> so we are so we we out all my flaws. <laughs> so we are Jesus. we've just turned fifty, right? We're fifty one, Kat and I. Okay. You are fifty three. Fifty three. Forty three. So you're forty three. So forty two, forty two. Forty two. So we're, we're middle aged. Yeah. Right? What's changed? Mm. What do you mean? What's changed? What's what? changed now that you're middle aged? What's changed? Is what you're doing with your hair a midlife crisis? Is this a cry for help? No, because I've done this. I do this about every couple yeah. of years. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, every time I met you up until now, I'd never seen your hair like that. Well, two years ago, I was on, did stuff with you at the fringe and I had this exact hair. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> So, I don't remember that. So maybe a strong nine in looks, <laughs> but in terms of observations, <laughs> a low one. <laughs> I think that bring that score down. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got other scores I want to talk about. <laughs> are, you, are you enjoying midlife, Tom? I, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely enjoy being older. No doubt about it. I like. Do you have less cares? Huh? Less cares in the world. Uh, you don't give a fuck anymore, or do you still? Uh, well, I've never given a fuck. I was going to say, I don't think you've ever don't, given a fuck. Again. No, no, yeah. no. Life rolls pretty fast. I'm Ferris Bueller, man. Let's roll. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't know if you remember that. Life moves pretty fast. Yeah. If you don't stop and take a look around, you might miss it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Fucking my motto. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> Probably wrote that myself, but I got it first. Um, yeah, no, I love midlife, man. Of course I love midlife, because this is a... Here, 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 here's something. 
kind of cool, but midlife is when your mortality shows up, man. Like that's when you start thinking, oh my God, I got like what, 17 summers left. <laughs> and all of a sudden Shit. everything, yeah, man. Uh, the, no, you think I, 17's uh, even pretty. Uh, that <laughs> means I get to 70. <laughs> I don't see that And happen. you moved to Scotland and you went to summer. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah I moved, not only Thank was I an alcoholic, man. drug addict, gambler, I moved to Scotland. These aren't in Increasing my chances of living very long. But it makes you, my point is, it just, it makes you appreciate uh, every moment that you're, you're here. I know that sounds wanky and really spiritual, but I'm, I'm really on that point. That's, if you're asking me what I like about midlife, it's, it's, yeah, I feel my mortality now. I know it's coming to an end. Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to power. Yeah. Enjoy it. Like nobody's business. So do you wake up in the last, last three days of a vacation? God, I'm going home. (laughs) I'm going to miss the swimming pool. (laughs) So the last three days you're like, I'm going to that swimming pool every morning. But when you first showed up at the vacation, you're like, yeah, swimming pool. (laughs) Gonna go get hammered for the first four days. I realized you gotta go back to shitty little wish dog. <laughs> God, no pool there. <laughs> So that, yeah, so that's how I feel. So you wake up in the morning just just thankful to be alive. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you so wake much. up in the morning and go, oh, mm-hmm. I care less about what people think of me now. Okay. That's a big one. Well, that's, that's a big change because when I first it. met you, you were, how can I put it? You were very aware of what people were thinking yeah. of you. And you were also very aware that people were getting opportunities that you weren't getting. Sure. And that you were pissed off and upset and angry. Why were they getting it and you were not getting it? Because I'm a five-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I think that's for every comedian, Mark. So yeah, I'm probably at the same stage now that Tom was when you met him. Yeah. And what way you're thinking? I, see, I, don't, I don't really... He's talented. I, what, oh, sorry, I don't I think don't, about... Uh, I don't think about... Me, I don't think... I don't really consider myself middle aged. Like I don't really think about age that much. No, neither because I do still I. act like a bit of a tit. Yeah, most of the time anyway. Because this job allows you to act like a tit. <laughs> and whenever I'm out with my pals or I'm away on holiday, I don't really, you know, I don't act my age at yes. all. No, like you, like you, like especially like growing up nineties. I think because there's so much of it still about. Mm-hmm. I, it's particularly at concerts. I still consider myself. 18 when yeah. I'm at those concerts yeah. and I don't look you at should know no, better, people, you people, will, people will look at me and my pals and go the fuck is the state of this <laughs> group of guns <laughs> after, after Mark's on 8 E's <laughs> 43 year old man going man you're so soft I'm just trying to have a good time whatever <laughs> yeah. get so if you're always been a bit man at a festival <laughs> <laughs> You always start at this time. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Six in the morning. <laughs> you don't really have to grow up, though, do you? Yeah. What does that even mean, though? What does grow up mean? Like that's yeah, a, exactly that's a, that's mean. a ridiculous thing. Because you would say grow up would mean like yeah, you, you know, uh, whatever all the responsibilities are, have your kids, uh, you know, wife and all that sort of stuff. That the, the I think grown up is a fifties idea of what mm. grown up is uh, however you want to see that like m- m- you know man job girl home, woman home blah 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 being all but i don't think that those are the rules anymore no i think i think those are smashed and i think like every time you hear 50s the new 30 it ain't <laughs> <It's> so ain't <laughs> i've been 30 this feels nothing like 30 <laughs> Like my body, like at 30, I could drink two bottles of Jack Daniels <laughs> and still go to work the next morning. <laughs> now, now they're like, does he have a pulse? <laughs> I, I was, thought I was thirty last night. And I almost died. Yeah, man. So it's different. It is different. It, and you're right. The times are different, but, and the but, way but, you think about life is different because there's more information out there. There's more people. People see like uh, instead of just when you were saying nineties and eighties, you'd look at life through a magazine. You go, I wish I could be like that. Blah 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 blah. But now uh, you you've got the information out there. Your sensory overload. You you see so many different ways of seeing life now mm. through other people's eyes that that 
that that old fashioned way of thinking, this idea of grown up. Grown up just means, you know, to me now, take care of your business, but have some fun. I've gotten to the point now where I realize there's no no such thing as a make or break gig anymore. There's just, yeah. there just isn't because yeah. I, I started, you know, in this world, they think that in this world, in this time of comedy, they think that there's such a thing as a make or break gig, whether like a viral video or whatever, blah, 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 a but it, a TikTok video that gets millions and millions of views. And, and they think that, 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 that gig's going to change their life. It doesn't change their life. You start realizing after doing this for a long time, it's, it's, there's no make or break gig because it's a body of work you're, you're yeah. going get for after, isn't it? yeah. it's hard you're, to get you're going for a body of work not one show not one album not one of this mm-hmm. and that's that's really where the success comes from mm-hmm. so you, you you free your once you start thinking in those terms you free yourself up from worrying about individual gigs you know what i mean and yeah. you start like i i treat every gig like it's a work in progress now work in progress is, means that i can experiment you know you I mean? as soon as a show well, the, the oh, idea sorry. of there was there will be people that that that, that, that there have been people that have looked like overnight successes like Bridges is one of them yeah Kevin Mickey Flanagan yeah. John Bishop yeah. Sarah Milken because that all all came and they all came off the McIntyre show and for one night Kevin was Kevin was <laughs> dark, like, <laughs> but it was it was just a but, <laughs> Sorry. But you are, <laughs> you are kind of, they don't realise, like, especially like Mickey Flanagan. Mickey Flanagan had been like one of the best comedians in the country for 10 years yeah. before that. Yeah. Wow. And then he just, that was one show. And then what, like Tom's talking about, there, there is that body of work that then once you get that opportunity, if yeah. you've then got folk go, Jesus Christ, this guy's at 10 years worth of material behind him. Right. Then they go, fucking hell. And they look back on it. Yeah. When that one gig does come, and it comes for some people. Do mm. you know what I mean? For I, I would say meat van for me. Yeah, that yeah. was that. That's a definite. Yeah. Everybody went. Whoosh, yeah, like that. And all of a sudden, all your eyes are on you. And if you ain't ready for it, mm. then yeah, if that's all you've got, if then, that's all you got, yeah, then you're screwed. That's man. why you get it. You get it now with um, comedy clubs. I've spoken to comedy clubs and the bookers at them. And when they're doing tour shows, you'll get like a tour that Tom would do. But then the next night will be someone who's had a video go massively viral on TikTok or something. But that's it. That's all they have. Yeah. And there's and nothing been more. to do a tour. There was loads and of festival yeah. people that yeah. had just had oh, a TikTok. Yeah. But it's a new, yeah. it's also, I, I want to say this, it's also a new genre yeah, of I comedy. Think it's of comedy. Like, yeah. like when I hear, oh, who's this guy? I'll walk around and go, oh, you don't know who this guy is? He's an Instagram mm-hmm. star yeah. or a TikTok star. Did and you you're know? like going, you're a YouTube sensation. Yeah. And you're like, well, what does that even mean? I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Yeah. Like, like the, because, like, for me, is it? Did he put stand ups on there, or is he a skit guy, or yeah. whatever? Mm-hmm. But it's just this overall encompassing thing that it's a new thing that people want to see it's with the TikTok stars, and that I'm not so sure it's about the talent of the person. They just want to go and see somebody famous yeah. that they can say, "Oh, we went and saw this really famous guy." So that is a new, is a new uh, area of comedy, and it can be brilliant. If they then went on and did sketches like they do on that, but then they're being tr- they're being forced down a stand up route, route. Yeah. like what you do. They're not like stand ups. Yeah. So yeah. did you not have massive success though with social media with your little girl? Yeah, but that that would ne- that never translated because I'm so totally different. I'm so different to that. <laughs> By the way, can so I just... Minute, first of all, what was that and when? So, so that was, was oh God, about seven odd years ago yeah. where... It, but it, well, that was videos I did with her yeah. and that was about the news and it was it was really successful. But like numbers, what kind of numbers? Oh, yeah. Millions, the millions. 75 million. Yeah. 175 million? Yeah. 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 And more on the one show watched, and everything. More people watched one of those videos than watched the trailer for the Avengers film. Wow, no, yet, is that true, man? Yeah, and yet you're sitting that's crazy. in wish all with me and you. <laughs> but that's but but I never did it. To, I never did it. I did it as a because it was a laugh that we yeah. could do. It. I mean, they're brilliant. The two of us were in the house all day, mm-hmm. but I knew it was never going to come to anything because I'm so different on stage. People, I mean, people came 
after that, because of that, and then as soon as they saw my show, people would walk out because they'd go, this is totally different. Yeah. <laughs> like, this guy, this, this guy, this guy's hor- this is a horrible person on stage <laughs> yeah. compared to what they thought I was. So, <laughs> so yeah, massively- but it should have, yeah. with that logic though, like if, a, if 175 million people mm. watched it and liked it, you would think that, you know, Mark, you'd be selling out Fucking just for the fact alone, we want to come and see Mark. You'd be selling out arenas and shit. That's yeah. that's that kind of fame, man. But it didn't translate. But into at that, that time, stuff. but that was before the likes of TikTok, and, and that weird. was before it everyone. Have, that was way. before everyone put on a lot of videos. That was quite a new kind of thing. You're right. For a, a, a comedian time. to have a, a video go that viral was a new thing. So no one really knew. So you couldn't monetize to, it with adverts and sponsorship nah. and stuff like that. And this, this industry, again, like most entertainment industries. It's one of the only ones where experience is kind of looked at as a negative. Um, That's a valid so, point, Mark. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, like it is a valid point. People would, but people, yeah. people like if you, if you, if you've been any other any other business, right? if you start up a business, you start an office, you start up a plumbing company a fucking anything if you've got a guy that's been doing it at the top level for twenty five years, he's at the absolute top of the game. That's not the case with this guy that's been doing it for 25 years. Fucking ignore him. Yeah. This guy that's been doing it for a year. That's the guy we're going to plaster. How weird is that? Yeah. That's, that's it, massively annoying. With the experience, you, you, you know what you, you know, you're going to be getting a good show every single year, man, because that's what it takes to get a good show. You yeah. have to, you can't, yeah. you got to work it. Like everybody says 10 years before you're even good. And you know, now, now, so, what is so the, now 30 years means absolutely you're right. 30 huh. years means nothing even though like this this year was the best show i've ever done i guarantee it i mm. guarantee so this. you know that you have that feeling you i know totally at the end of the festival, know it was can... the best show and i because every every year you you, you 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 talk about uh you know being edgy and all that sort of stuff i want to get edgier and edgier and see if i can make it the, the the more edgy and the more palatable you can get means that means you're a way better comedian yes you know what i mean yeah. because you're you're dropping bombs that people shouldn't be laughing at but you're so good you're making them laugh at it that's the goal for me for the most part and that's the goal for most comedians i think but you're right in the in the end you know what i mean they probably don't want that anymore and i think that's robbing the audience and the other thing i wanted to say too is when you were talking about watching the apollo you're right uh the people that watch the apollo are the middle aged you know we're still the tv and and you're throwing on kids that like when i would watch the like if not not, nothing against them of course yeah yeah, never ever again them but it's not what i want to see because i'm i'm not i'm not relating to any of it in in fact most of it i find self-indulgent yes you know what i mean there's no relatability into what you're saying you're just telling me a story that happened to you that day and that i would have to be there to find it even amusing yes so but that's that's the easily so what does make you laugh then what what's funny anything inappropriate (laughs) anything inappropriate anything inappropriate i've never laughed at anything appropriate and that's a, that's the truth. Really? Well, of course, man. Because uh, you know that's that's what humor is. Humor is always saying the thing that you're not supposed to say, and the, and when you're not supposed to say it, that's why it's funny. Because if you say something that I expect you to say, I'm not going to laugh. So a knock knock joke would it make you laugh? Uh, not really, unless it was really it inappropriate. Was, yeah, if, if the punchline, yeah, was the, pun- no. the last thing you expected them yeah. to say, then you go, "Fuck yeah, that's." Yeah. I see what you mean. Are you the same? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I laugh. I laugh at quite a lot of stuff. Like, there's nothing. There's but, but there needs to be the, appropriate inappropriateness. Yeah, would be a good thing to say. But there's like I'll, I'll laugh at a lot of because the thing is like observational comedy. We do observational comedy, but observational comedy is seen as being this Lee Evans kind of <laughs> describing what the fuck he saw in the. And there's nothing against Lee Evans. It's very funny stuff, but it's not all observational comedy. Is obs- it, by its very nature is going out and observing things that people do and happens in real life and then you find a funny angle on Michael it. Michael McIntyre does that as well and he does my head in. But I can't stand him. That, but that, that's what would be seen as traditional observational comedy. Yeah. But it's not the only observational comedy. I can't All watch I, I literally can't watch Michael McIntyre. I think McIntyre is incredibly good at comedy. I think I think he's great at comedy, but hold on. I wanna, oh, here I'm we go. A here we go. Thing is, you'll never, I've never seen Michael go into uh, dangerous topics. Would you say that to yeah. be true? Well, that's true. Yeah. No, that is true. Yeah. So I've never, I would love to hear Michael McIntyre's take on abortion. <laughs> I would love to hear Michael McIntyre. <laughs> 
<laughs> it would be really hilarious watching him <laughs> skip around, throwing dead babies <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Between a woman's legs, his hair flopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But what Michael's good at is, here. here's where I, when I say for me inappropriate is what I laugh at. It's because I like that kind of comedy. But I also know there's comedy that needs to be there for a grandma and his her nine-year-old grandson. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's Michael McIntyre. Yeah. And if you're watching me with your nine-year-old grandson, you're <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking awesome and you've and done your research. on the register of social services. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but I, I also get, and that's what they would call to me... That's the mainstream. The yeah. mainstream is the the not offend anybody, uh, not make and not challenge anybody. That's uh -huh. what the mainstream is to me. Is there not a place but that's for that? Not what, of course, there is. It's mm -hmm. called television, whatever. But for for me, like to to be raised on the comedy that you love, the Sam Kinnisons of the world, the the Richard Pryors of the world, like when you really get Eddie into Murphy. it, that's who you want to be. And if you can get your inappropriateness as big as the mainstream, that's when you become one of the greatest comedians in the world, right? Because mm -hmm. there's you, like you say, there's Lee Evans. But there's all, Lee Evans draws uh, big arenas mm. and all that shit. But would you compare him to Dave Chappelle? No. You know what I mean? But yeah. Dave Chappelle, I bet you had a harder ride than yeah. Lee Evans to get to where he got Is that to. the dream then for you guys? Like this, yeah. the stadium tours? I would that... love, I'd love to do one in my lifetime. Yeah. You betcha. yeah, I would love to do one. I don't, I, I don't think I could do that arena stuff all the time. Because it is so like a hydro, say like a yeah. I'd again, amazing. I'd love to do. I've done it though. Yeah, don't think I haven't done it, <laughs> man. I've, I've I played the O2 Arena, man. Just let's let's yeah. not. Let's, <laughs> was, let's, that, was that your let's game? Take a look at some of the notches in my belt here. <laughs> yep, that one was the arena. Oh, that was my first opening spot. That was pretty important too. <laughs> Yeah, no. But I mean, at this stage in your life and your career, is that is that what you're hoping for, aiming for? Again, again, this is no goal. I would like it to happen. Yeah, I would love for it to happen, but uh, it has to happen by me trying to be the best comedian I can be. I have been to a few arenas to see yeah. the likes of Kevin Bridges and that. And I much prefer seeing comedy up close and personal. Yeah. I, I much I, prefer I, a I, million dollar paycheck. What I'm saying is, this is entirely about money. That's what it's about. It's not yeah. about because I want Stating to play in it. gigs are about yeah. money, though. It's yeah, not, about, it's money. not about else for a stand-up comedian working in an arena. I think if I'm you, I prefer working at the Edinburgh I, Festival, you, up close and personal. You can see the beads of sweat in the whole, in the yeah, audience. Yeah, I you can look into their eyes. I agree. The, the greatest time. show I've ever seen was not in an arena. I mean, that's my point. And I think from an a arena. standard comedian's point of view, is it not easier and is it not better doing what you... I think, most people, you, would, I think listen, most people would rather do, do it like that. Let me do one arena gig and I'll do all the... Let me do one <laughs> arena tour and then I'll do as many little clubs yeah. as you want, <laughs> knowing that I'm not going to be sucking dick when I'm 70 and <laughs> poor. Because I just, you know, I just wanted to do real comedy every night. See, that's the difference. Because 75. So it's, it's, it's about money. The arena, arena, the arena, yeah, the the arena, arena tour is about, about money. money. But then, like you're saying, I would rather go and see someone. I would rather see Metallica at the Barrowlands yeah. than I would at the Hydro. At, at Hamden. Of course I would. Because yeah. it'd be far, far better because you're close to the stage. It's louder. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're squashed up against it. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. I think there's a I think there's an ideal ceiling for stand up gigs because like doing doing it in a, a comedy club to 150 people is great because you get that intimacy. But then when you do do a theater oh, of yeah. like three thousand three thousand, then like the playhouse, yes, that that wall that hits you. But then once you start going over that, then it becomes yeah, that kind of like speaking to people that have done arena gigs, they then they then say you have to learn how to play them different because. Yeah. There's an actual, like, it takes the sound longer to hit people at the back. Yes. So you need to speak, you need to pace it in a certain way. So now you're 
it's more like of a, a performance, so you can't really be natural because then, and then the, the 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 sound comes back at you. So you're yeah. waiting for the laugh. Like, yeah, yeah, so it's then it becomes weird, and then and also like you can still be pretty good at it though. Like well, you once you get it, oh, once, you, once you get it, once you mm. become that arena comedian, yeah, that that arena will feel like a club to you. Yeah. yeah. You sound like you're comfortable with where you are and what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I, 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 like, I, yeah. And again, you always not, want more. It's not a jealousy thing. It's, no. it's an ambition no. thing. But no, it's also there's, nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with having ambition. Well, there's nothing wrong with ambition. And I, I, it just it generally just does piss me off, the lack of... Um, opportunities? No, not opportunities. For me, the lack of imagination in yeah. television bookers. I'm 100% Is that your biggest frustration you, then? Yeah. 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 I think it's because I've seen... So many comedians that I would consider to be the best at what they do, and watch watch them pick the wrong ones. Yeah, completely every time because every time it's um, is this kind of like a general consensus? Do you think then within? Yeah, I bet, I bet you if you asked, watch this. I bet yeah. you if you walked around and and said, okay, every comedian gets one ballot to who they think was the best, mm-hmm. that would be your winner. Yeah. If you, if you, because we're the ones in the business. Yeah. We're the ones that actually know what's going yeah. on. We know if this guy's the real deal or if he's not the real deal. Mm-hmm. So if you went around and said, okay, Mark, you got ballot, ballot for one guy. Okay. One guy. And we, and then you've matched them all up. I will guarantee you're pretty close because every comedian would probably would know. pick the one that they would think is the greatest and you'd probably that would be that should be your winner Mm -hmm. and that should be the dude that goes Goes, on yeah tv Mm -hmm. and that stuff yeah but instead you've got i I, believe it or not i heard one of the judges asked a friend of mine if he wanted to be one of the judges and i'm like dude you were asked to be one of the judges and he's like yeah and i'm going you know nothing about comedy and he went yep <laughs> and i was like well yeah. there you go man like <laughs> tell me who these people are that come down to judge the show what yeah. are their credentials you know what i mean do they even know what they're looking at yeah. probably not but like you said yeah, that, that we're at the that's, mercy that's what annoys me the most that kind of fakeness that kind of yeah. like i remember years ago there was someone that was Support, like I'd been told and been told and been told that they were going to be nominated for the I think it was, I don't know if it was still the Perrier but it was whatever it was at that point and the night before the nominations, their PR company took every single one of the judges out for dinner and that's what annoys me yeah. the fact that you can oh. buy stuff, that that really annoys me jeez, that's yeah. influence and buying yeah. Aye. yeah, and it's not, I mean it's it's life, but it's yeah. annoying it's Cause, annoying because, because you know because well. you know you know this isn't, you know this industry isn't a meritocracy anyway, yeah. but that really hammers at home, yeah. where you go fuck's sake so you need a bigger budget for chips then yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You've got a massive tour coming up, haven't you? I've got a big one. Is yeah. it like and two and a half thousand dates or something? Yeah, it's two and a half thousand. Pretty incredible, huh? I do five tour dates in one night. Yeah, and if you go to tomstade.com, uh, this is, I'm so bad at this, but I'm going to get better at it because I keep watching on Instagram, even guys going, hey guys, just want to tell you my ticket sales are on yeah, yeah. sale. Oh, go. hey so guys, just want to tell you. <laughs> So, so I'm going to do it for the first no, time. Work, work the camera. Okay. Work Listen, right. Right. Tom sure. State sure. Natural sure. Born Killer. That they were coming to theaters <laughs> near you. TomState.com. Tickets are selling fast. <laughs> so get your hands on those, and we can sell this out. It's not about talent. It's about numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll bring the talent, you bring the numbers. And Mark, what's your plans coming up? We've got uh, So I've got two or um, don't want to say only 20, 28 dates, I think. This is my first ever one. You're yeah. a slacker oh, yeah. in comparison oh, to yeah. yeah. You're going to love it, dude. Yeah. Is this yeah. your first proper tour? First ever tour, yeah. Is it? Yeah. But you've I mean, been about it forever. Yeah. That's <laughs> amazing to me, actually. Did, did, yeah. You did have a successful Edinburgh, though. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, ah, yeah, you had yeah, a very yeah, successful yeah. Edinburgh. Yeah. Did you not go and see Mark? No, 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 no you came down to her. Yeah, no, I was I, I, no, it was my son who went to see you. Yeah, I went yeah, to see Tom. Yeah, yeah, my son yeah, loved yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was brilliant. He yeah. said you were brilliant. Ah, so your first ever tour. First ever tour. Then I've got the Kings at the are end of March. Are you doing the Kings? So are you? That's the main I went to see you at the Kings a yeah, few years man. ago as well. That's a brilliant venue. That's a good one. So you're at the Kings when? Um, 
Oh, Mark. How big Mark. is it? That's shocking. That's shocking. That's Somebody massive. look up and <laughs> score. Is it the Glasgow Comedy Festival? So, uh, my, my it must be yes. part of the festival. 20, 22nd of March. 22nd of March. Right. March. So, is that the Mark, Glasgow Festival? Mark, there's the camera there. Camera, work um, it. So, I've got uh, my tour starts. <laughs> uh, it's called All the Best. Uh, <laughs> pretty much the end of February, all the way through March. I'm all over the UK and Ireland. And then the 22nd of March ends at the King's Theatre. Google Mark yeah. Nelson. Just go on social, social media. Social media. Twitter, I I, I Instagram, well. Facebook, Grinder. Grinder as well. Anything. That's where Tom found you, wasn't it? You yeah. bet. Aye. We've already talked about our love for one another. And we heard that earlier, yes. Um, why do you live in Wishaw? Can you remind us of that again? <laughs> because it's way cheaper to live in Wishaw than it is to live in Edinburgh. And in Wishaw, I am fucking loaded. <laughs> I, I am show. fucking rich. <laughs> I am Kevin Bridges rich in this show. <laughs> When I go to Edinburgh, <laughs> I'm Mark Nelson poor. <laughs> Beautifully summed up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, we've, so got the bowl, uh, we've got the bowl of destiny. You each okay. have to pick a question. Okay. Uh, first question you pick out of the bowl, have a read of it. You don't need to take that question. Right. Is that a question for us or do we ask each other? No, no, no. no. It's a question for you. It's a question for us. Right. Um, you can take the first question. If you don't like it, you can throw that away and uh, take another one, but then you have to answer that one. Okay, right, so you okay. get one. You get one, one that you can. If you, you can like, pass you can it, it, but you can you know, like it. So you can go first, Tom. Oh, of course. Bowl of destiny. Pick a question. Bowl They're a mix of sensible of and silly, destiny. so it could be okay. anything. You can so read you, it to yourself. to yourself. You can either have that question or you can swap it. Mm. I'm trying to read the face. Do you want Not, it or do you want to swap it? No, I know it. <laughs> you want it? Yeah, I you, want so it. You want that, that question. question? Yeah. Okay, so what is your question? Well, you know what okay. we're going to do with this question. Not only will you answer it, you'll answer it as well, Mark. Okay. Right. Okay. If you had an intro song that played every time you walked into a room, what would it be? <laughs> oh, that's a good oh, that's question. A I love that. Question. That's a good I one. I love that. Every time you walked into a room, every that room. song would start. It's already there. Is that already there? Do you yeah. want to give us a clue to? I'll play the yes or no game. Uh, Are we talking he's, 60s? He's no, 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 no. Maybe. Shh, shh, shh. You, you say yes or no. We'll ask okay. some questions. Okay. Is it the 60s? Mm -mm. 70s? Nope. 80s? Um, yeah. So it's a song in the 80s. Rock? Yeah. Is that a rock? Is that a commercial rock band? Someone that you'd hear on the radio commercially was a top 10 hit? <sighs> Uh, Are we talking White Snake here? That sort of band, mm, that sort of level. The hair would be the same. The Are hair would some be the same. Random Canadian band that we're never going to have heard of. He, no, he's from this country. He's from oh. this country, the UK. From the UK, yeah. A rock band. Is it Ozzy Osbourne? Uh, it's not a band. It's not a oh solo singer. Solo singer. Solo singer, but a rock solo singer. Yeah. Are we well, talking? I would consider him a rock singer. Billy right? Idol. You got one of the names right. It's not Billy Idol. Bragg. So you you got one of the names uh, right. So it's Billy. Billy, can you give us a clue to? Feel like I'm on never mind the bus. <laughs> is it never mind the bus calls intro? No. <laughs> Do you want me to give you his first initial of his name? Yeah. yeah. Okay. S. Billy S. Why are we not getting this, you? And this is appalling. This is quite embarrassing. This Billy actually. Squire. Yeah. Billy Squire. Billy Squire, Stroke Man. What's Squire. the song called? Stroke Man. Stroke, stroke me. me. Stroke Me. Stroke <laughs> Me. True. You got your number down. <laughs> Tom's here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> right, we're gonna play some fast game now. I hear him coming. <laughs> He's gonna be here any second. Let's get our stroking mix. <laughs> <laughs> it's a showbiz song. It's a showbiz song. And then the door bursts open, and there yeah, you are with my cock out. <laughs> stroking me. <laughs> right, have you got your song? I think so. Right, so we're going to... Well, I, I was torn between two. Okay, but have you got one right now? So we're going to do the yes or no game with you as well. Yeah, okay. Okay, are we talking... It's pretty easy. 70s? Nah. 80s? Nah. 90s? Yeah. Okay, are we talking pop? No. Rock? Yeah. Britpop? Yes. We're talking Britpop? Yes. Blur? 
No. Pulp. No. Oasis. Yeah. Oasis. Uh, oh, is it Oasis or is it, because I know something about you. Because uh, <laughs> oh. well, I was backstage. Uh, what's the guy's name? The other Oasis guy. Liam, Liam. Gallagher. Liam. Liam. No, it's not Liam, no. Oh, it's not Liam. Okay. So it's, it's an Oasis Still song. It's anger. a full band. No. Shaker no. Maker. No. Rock and Roll Star. That's a rock and roll oh, star, Grace. Whoa. That's like a good it. one. Be a yeah. Rock and roll Can you imagine that? Yeah, oh, here's Mark. He's on his way and rock and roll stars started up. Yeah, yeah I like that. Then That's stroke good. me works in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to listen to that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Another one, everybody wants you. <laughs> oh, I'm singing everybody wants you. That's uh, you can have that question or you can swap it, Mark, and both of you will answer it. Ugh. You can have it you or swap it. it. I'm going to because it's not. It's just, I don't think it's going to be funny. Anymore. Okay. Okay. The Bowl of Destiny. Okay. Hit me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Right, so, so both of we yes, but opened it and we're guessing we like yeah, this one. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would do anything for love, but I would do that. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we should let him answer this. <laughs> so I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. What is that, Mark? What is that, Mark? Anal. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> What, what would I not do for love? Um, do you know what I wouldn't do? Anything involving feet. You're not a feet guy? No. Nah. At all? Don't get it at all. At all? I find feet pretty fucking repulsive, if I'm honest with so you. So see when someone wears open-toed shoes, do you not have a look? No, God, no. What, like a, a, like a perv on somebody's feet. No, I'm not saying as in perving it, but if someone's <laughs> wearing open-toed shoes, do you not have a look? Do you no. look at people's toes? I'm not, I don't. I hate feet. I'm like Mark. I don't like feet at all. I've got no interest in them whatsoever. I even insist that my wife wears socks walking around the house. <laughs> right. I like to wear a massage in the morning, the massage table. Right. My wife has to wear socks at all times. And she's if she, big feet. Well, she's got water skis. Oh. Now, see, no, because she's a tall, she's a tall, she's a tall Hi, woman. <laughs> she's six foot one. Um, she's also stunning. Or as we call you here in the studio, Bigfoot. <laughs> 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 Whatever, Sasquatch. <laughs> <Got it all>. <laughs> <laughs> so you grab the track while I'm done. Mom's got, mom's got out again. <laughs> 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 so hey, even take this behemoth down. <laughs> <laughs> so even when my wife is walking around without so found on, her trail, <laughs> found her trail, <laughs> and if she's sat on the sofa, she has to cover them up. Mm -hmm. I don't like feet. I just there's nothing. Not that my wife's feet are ugly or that they're bent or anything like that, or she's got massive bunions or anything like that. Because she looks after her feet, right? But I'm just not a feet guy. So yeah, you're, I, you're, I, no, I, it's not. But you won't do, do that. that. No. Nah. Would you? Would you lick a toe? No. God, have, no. have you ever licked a toe? God no. Your wife? No. Is your wife into feet? No. No. She's never asked you to massage her feet. No, see, I wouldn't even do that. Would you not I even do that for someone. her? No, I wouldn't touch someone's feet. Even oh, your wife. I like that. She's I in the that. bath yeah, and she yeah, comes yeah. in. Yeah, there's, I have a massage Wait, 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 wait. Ooh. I was going to set the scene for you, Mark, right? Your wife's in the bath. She gets, right. she's got a dressing gown on. She's had a hard day and she's got, she's, she needs relaxing and she goes, go and give my feet a massage. It would she, never happen, but again, no, I'd be. You wouldn't do I'd it? I'd be out of there. <laughs> I, you know, I did, I, when I was on holiday this year, I got a Thai massage for the first ever time. Right, because I was proper like getting knots and everything. And when I was lying down, because I've only ever had like two massages in my life, because I just, I, I just, the reason was because I had one in my honeymoon and I'd got sunburned really badly. And then they gave us a couple's massage on the beach. And this this woman that was doing it used salt rub. Oh, so I'd shit, like on the sunburn. Like I felt like I was getting you. fucking grayed. Like, yeah. I felt like a carrot. It was like <laughs> brutal. So for the whole hour, I was just in pain. <laughs> Thinking that's every yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and, and then I, it was really good because it was like, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is really actually helping. And then when she started doing the feet, that's when I started getting tense again. I was like, touch my feet. It's fucking disgusting. Like, do the back thing again. Get the soul. Anything but the feet. Big bag of salt. Turn my eye. Are you into feet? Yeah, I like feet. 
Do you? Yeah, I'm, 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 the, I'm the opposite, man. I, I got, I, I, I got a massage table. Like, a, a, we, it was on, it was a Groupon thing <laughs> we saw, and I bought a massage table because I thought it'd be really fun, and it turned out it was one of the best things I'd ever done because, like, when you're bored, just sitting in the living room, and you just open that <laughs> shit up, and all of a sudden, everybody's naked, and there's a lot of oil around, you know. There's gonna Any be, salt? Oh, there's going to be salt. <laughs> I, I just found that out. Okay, okay. we're gonna try that. I'm gonna try that. Get the some rock salt. Yeah. <laughs> you in the bed? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> don't worry, Mark Nelson. Don't me. This is what we're doing. Mark told me. Um, I'll put in the rock yeah. salt. <laughs> the rock salt. Here comes the vinegar. <laughs> Yeah, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, I'm going in there. And, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, man. Um, well, that's about it because he's got kids to pick up at school. Okay. I know you've oh, got. I don't yeah. know. My kids are grown. We're oh, done. Yeah, I know. He's, he's still got young children. Yeah, he's, he's, he's 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 in it, uh, he's just, and, and, and I've Mark's, got. Mark's in the jungle still. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the family jungle. I <laughs> don't know if I'm going to survive. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like a veteran. <laughs> he's, he's in another war that I don't know about. <laughs> Rather you in, than me. Yeah, I, I was in the naughties, man. <laughs> I was in the nineties in the naughties. Uh, so Mark's got some kids to pick up, and yeah. I know you've just got a massage chair to go to. Absolutely, yeah, with, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, it's always like a giggle when we meet up, but that was uh, something. Uh, Definitely. Yes, it was um, epic. Thank you so much to Tom Stade and also to Mark Nelson. And if you want tickets for their UK wide tour, uh, they're on sale right now. Yep. On sale right now. Yep. Two of the very best. They might be from different parts of the world, but they both live in Scotland and are two of the best comedians in this country. So go and see them. Tom Stade, Mark Nelson, thank you very much. All thank you. All right. I'm clapping. Clapping. I'm clapping yourself. Clapping Woo! myself out. <laughs> Stay around, everybody. Was it stroke me? Stroke me. That's it. <laughs>